This is Professor Corey, and this video is a mini lecture based on our third lecture from Chapter 14, Kinetics. In our previous lecture, we introduced how to write a rate law and determining the reactant orders. In this lecture, we're going to go into more detail and learn how to calculate a value for our rate law constant, K. The method introduced in the previous lecture is called the method of initial rates. Recall that a plot of reactant concentration over time has a very steep slope at the start of the reaction. This is really close to being linear, so we can use this region of the plot. And also, we know our initial concentration, so all we have to do is measure the rate. This reaction has two reactants, so our rate law can be set up as rate equals K times the concentration of NO times the concentration of H2. The data table below shows concentrations of both reactants as well as the initial rate. We will use this data to determine the orders for each of the reactants to put into the rate law expression. In trials 1 and 3, the concentration of NO does not change. The concentration of H2 is doubled, so any change in the rate must be due to the doubling of the H2. As you can see, doubling the concentration doubles the rate. This mean that, means that the reaction is first order in H2. A useful method to make a con, is to make a concentration ratio by dividing the larger concentration by the smaller concentration and then doing the same with the rate. The concentration ratio to the power equals, or to what power, equals the rate ratio. In this case, to the concentration ratio to what power equals 2? The answer is 1. So this means the reaction is first order in A. So we know the order with respect to H2. Now we need to find two experiments where H2 is constant and the concentration of NO changes. We can use trials 2 and 3. The concentration ratio of NO is 0 0.3 divided by 0 or 0 0.03 divided by 0.01, which equals 3. The corresponding rate ratio is 0.324 divided by 0 0.0120, and this equals 27. 3 to what power equals 27? The answer is 3, so the reaction is third order in NO. We can write our rate law expression now, and the overall order is 4. We can determine the units of K using molarity, or concentration, to the 1 minus the overall times time to the negative 1. The units of K will be molarity to the negative 3 times time to the negative 1, or we could say 1 over molarity cubed times time. Now that we have the rate law, we can take any experiment and enter the values into the rate law to solve for a numerical value of K. In this case, we chose trial 3. A useful method for determining the order of a reactant when it is not obvious is to take the rate ratio of the two experiments and then take the base 10 log of this value. This will be divided by the log of the concentration radio, ratio and the result will be your order. This is the method we used in the lab where we did the method, method of initial rates. To determine concentrations or times anywhere on the curve, we need to use integrated rate laws. This is because of the curved shape of our plot. The integrated rate laws are based on the rate law expression. With the integrated rate laws, we will have two concentrations of the reactant. The subscript 0 represents the concentration at time 0, or the initial concentration. The subscript t means the concentration at some time, some time t. k is our rate law constant and the t is our time. For a reaction that is zero order, we can use the equation at the bottom to solve for amounts at any time or time to reach a certain amount. This will make more sense when we do some practice problems. We can rearrange our integrated rate law for a zero order reaction so that it is in the y equals mx plus b format. This shows us that if we plot our concentrations of reactants on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, the slope of our line will be equal to negative k, and the y-intercept will be our initial concentration. Remember, k is always positive, 
So if the slope is negative, we take the negative of the value so that we have a positive k. The process for writing the integrated rate law for first order reactions is similar, but don't worry too much about the process as the integrated rate laws are typically provided. The integrated rate law for a first order reaction is shown, and if we rearrange it into y equals mx plus b format, we can see that a plot of the natural log of the concentration versus time will have a slope equal to minus k, and the y-intercept will be equal to the natural log of the initial concentration. We can take the inverse log of this value to get the initial concentration. The fact that this plot is linear tells us that the reaction is first order. If we plotted the same data set with just the concentration versus time, like for a zero order reaction, it would be curved in shape. Second order reactions will use a plot of 1 over the concentration of A. We're just saying A is our, our reactant. See the reaction is A goes to products. So if we plot 1 over A versus time, the slope can be used to determine k. The y-intercept in this case is equal to 1 over the initial concentration, so we can determine the initial concentration. In summary, if we have one reactant and we make three plots, as noted above, only one will have a straight line. In this case, it's the center plot with the natural log of the reactant plotted versus time. For the, so for this example, we know the reaction is first order. However, if the concentration versus time plot, the one on the far left was linear, it would be zero order. Or if the one over concentration versus time plot, the one on the right was linear, it would be second order. There is some useful information on the table at the bottom of the slide also. I, I recommend pausing the video to look this over. The integrated rate laws will be provided, but you can see here um, the units of K, um, the what we would plot, um, to make to make our plots and and also the the rate equation now the rate equation we're, we're getting really comfortable writing rate equals K instead of rate they just wrote the change in the concentration of the reactant over the change in time which is the same as the rate the integrated rate laws will be used when we need to calculate a concentration at a certain time or if we want to know the time needed to reach a certain concentration these are the integrated rate law equations, and they will be provided. An example problem is shown, and the question tells us that the reaction is second order, so we can use the integrated rate law for a second order reaction and simply enter the values to solve for time. Since the rate law constant has units with time in minutes, the result will have to be converted from minutes to seconds. The answer to this question is 57 seconds. Pause the video and give it a try on your own. You want to be able to get 57 seconds as an answer. This question is for a first order reaction, so we will use the first order integrated rate law. The tricky part of this problem is the 88% to be consumed. We did not have an initial concentration, so I recommend use 100 milligrams as your initial concentration. Then 88% equals 88 milligrams. When 88 milligrams has been consumed, we are left with 12 milligrams. This is our concentration at time t. Masses can be used in place, of, in place of concentrations, so there's no need to find a molarity for this problem. Also notice that the units of k have time in years, and the question is asking for hours, so a conversion will be needed. The answer is 83.7 hours. Pause the video and see if you can get this value. This concludes our, our lecture for the method of initial rates and integrated rate laws. We also introduced a graphical method that can be used to determine the rate if only one reactant is present by plotting three charts and looking for the linear plot. In our final lecture for Chapter 14, we will discuss the half-life from a kinetics perspective as well as a deeper look at potential energy diagrams that were briefly introduced earlier. Until then, practice, practice, practice. Stay tuned for more mini-lectures on the Professor's Dubois channel.